lots of executives know you're from the shark tank. Uh, so tell us, do you really have to have sharp teeth to succeed in business these days? No, you know, the sharp teeth thing is kind of cool for TV, but it has nothing to do with succeeding as an entrepreneur. What's important is you have to have good judgment. You have to know when to go left, when to go right, and even more important than the judgment, you have to be the kind of person that's not afraid to fail. Trying this, trying that, getting back up, getting hit on the head, popping back up and say, hit me again, hit me again. You have to almost be uh, almost <laughs> unfatigable, if there's even such a word, to be an entrepreneur today. It has nothing to do with sharp teeth. Well, what is the competitive world of New York real estate? taught you about being a better leader? <laughs> you know, you can't be a real estate broker in New York and build a real estate sales team and not learn to be the best kind of leader in the world because what you're really attempting to do is take a lot of racehorses who really don't want to like each other and are enemies to one another and getting them under the same stable and making them get along. Every one of my salespeople that were phenomenal, making two, three, four million dollars a year, really didn't like the other salesperson who was doing as well. So as a leader, you have to figure a way, a venue, a way to make them like each other and play as a team. And if you think about what's key to every great leader is building a powerhouse team. And that you learn to do, building a business here in New York. Um, Barbara, are, are entrepreneurs and even good salespeople, are they wired a bit differently than the rest of us? And if so, how? Yeah, you know what they are? The really good ones are totally insecure. They have something to prove. They feel as though they're working around some hole in their being. Certainly that happened usually in childhood, either bad parenting or something like that. I know I, know I shouldn't be saying this, but this I found always to be the case. And what they're trying to do is prove something to the world. For me, I was such a dunce in school and made fun of as a stupid kid that I made one huge, long, lifelong attempt to show to the world once and for all. I am not stupid. And so every great sales person I hired was working around an insecurity and severely driven to prove differently. Okay. What have you learned about yourself uh, leading great teams and, and, and connecting with uh, this big diversity of people that you have to interact with here in New York? Uh, what, what's it taught you about yourself and your capacity to lead? You know what everybody responds to always is not fancy talk, not fancy this, fancy that, which in New York City you have it by the lion's share. Everything is done way beyond people's expectations. What people like is truthfulness, they like to hear it like it is, and they like to trust. And people will always forevermore do business with who they trust. And that is a rare commodity. The better you are in business, the more, the higher you go up in business, trust is the commodity that will win every time. I don't care what your style is. Well, Barbara, what's your take on executive leadership these days? There's a lot of you know, media and news reports, there's a presidential election out there. Um, what's your take on executives? What do they need to be doing better? Um, you know, what, what, uh, what should they be learning really about uh, the world we're living in and, and, and you know, the challenges of our times? You know, most great executive leaders that rise to the top and are approved by the corporate boards are phenomenal politicians. What they are particularly good at doing is making the guys on top of them really like them. So being a politician is key. That's a certain character trait and also a certain gift, certainly one that I don't have. Thank God I work for myself. But what an entrepreneur has and what a really naturally good leader or learned leader has is they have street smarts and they know not just how to kiss up, they kiss down. Because if you want to rise to the top of any industry, what you got to do is get your team lifting you up. And so there's a vast difference on perspective between a CEO at a large corporation who wants to please the guy up here and the entrepreneur whose very survival is based on how well they please the people underneath them as to how high they will be lifted up. Two different, two different kinds of people. Okay. Barbara, we just heard from Jim Collins a bit about the need for humility. Uh, how important is it, is it as you experience success to stay grounded and how do you define humility? I just don't believe in it, frankly. My mother said that the meek will inherit the earth. She had never visited New York City. What I found when I got here is that the big mouth inherited the earth. Perfect situation, Donald Trump. Is that a humble guy? And yet probably the most successful guy in his space. Like him, I hate him. He's still the most successful guy in that arena. Humility is a nice attribute to have once you've arrived and to say I'm humble and I'm just like you and me. But to take, but to take you from the street on the way up it's the worst thing to have to be humble. What you have, or what you really need, I should say, is a big mouth to make sure you look bigger and better than you really are, and then you have to run like crazy to catch up with your own big image.